Welcome back. In this session, we're going to be learning how to set up our toolpath, as well as use the 2D toolpath counter to machine our first flat. Now to get started, I'm going to show you my sketch again. Now this is our sketch, and we're machining this flat right here. So it's going to be half an inch deep, as you can see in our sketch, and we're going to machine that down using a 3 quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to minimize this sketch and get started. So to get started on this, it's very, very important to make sure that your origin point, you know where your origin point is. Now this is very important because you need to relate where the origin point in MasterCam as well as in your fixture where you're setting up your part to be machined. You don't want your machine to be crashing all over the place just because you set up your origin differently in both um, software. So I'm going to go up here to get started to machine type, go to mill, and go to default and be, because we're going to be milling that little flat. So you're going to now see the machine group 1 appear with properties. This is under the operations manager. I want you to click on that plus button and the little tree comes up and then click on tool settings. Now program number 1 or number, it's your, this is how you set up your program numbers in your CNC code or in your G codes. So this program is going to show that your first program is going to machine that flat. So let's pick number one as your first program. And then go to toolpath configuration and, and check on assign tool number sequentially. And then warn of duplicate tool numbers. You need those two. Now go to advanced options and then overwrite default with modal values. And go ahead and check all those four. And this is basically because we're going to be setting up our own uh, values. Now go to sequence number and change those to from 1, start, and then for increment to 1 as well. And then go ahead and click on stock setup in our second tab. And this is where you'll be setting up your stock. You want to set it up right underneath your sketch. Now you have your sketch basically sketched on top surface. So you want to make sure that that block is, that stock is basically right underneath it so you know where to start machining. Now go ahead and click on display so we can see it over here. Now the reason you don't see it is because we're on the top view and the block is going to be underneath it. Now there's two ways to do this. You know, you can set up your origin point. If you know where your origin point is, so basically if it's two inches from here and two inches from here, that's where the center is. That's what's asking you it is. You can, you know, go type in two inches for X, two inches for Y. But an easier way to do it is if you click on select corners, it's going to allow you to select from one corner, left click, and then drag it all the way to the top right, left click again, and it's going to give you your X and Y axis. So it knows now that this is 4x4 four four stock. It knows that the middle origin is 2 inches by 2 inches, which is what we talked about earlier, 2 inches by 2 inches. That's where the center is. And then it, the only thing it doesn't tell you is how deep you want it. We're going to have our part be 1.0 inches. And this, if I open up my sketch, you'll find it right here. So 1 inch thick stock. So I'm going to minimize it. Click on the check mark since we're done. Now click on isometric view all the way on top here so you can see your part in isometric view. Now I'm going to click on fit so I can see it a little bit better and then zoom out using my scroll key so I can see it. There we go. Now we have our little part on top and our stock right underneath it. Now we're ready to start uh, using our contour to machine our flat. So to get started with that, there's three ways to do this. First, I can either go to Toolpaths and select Contour. Or I can go to Settings, select tools, Toolbar States, 2D Toolpaths, and then load it. And this will load the 2D Toolpaths in the, on the left side. I'm going to click on the check mark. Now the third way is I can right click over here anywhere on the operations manager and go over mill tool path and then go over to contour. So there's many ways to do this. I'm going to just do this since I'm at it. It's going to ask you for the name to create a name for it. You can use any name you like and click on the check mark button. And then we're going to use a chain. So we're going to use basically a chain. It's going to mill it in a chain like function. So it's going to go back and forth, back and forth until it's done with it. And to get started on that, I'm going to go and and check where I want it to start. So I'm going to go over here to this line right here and click on it. It's going to tell me that the toolpath is going to go this way clockwise, counterclockwise. 
So I'm going to accept this by going to end right here to this little plus button. Then back over here and then clicking on this surface right here for me to tell it that the green arrow telling it where it starts. The red is where it's ending. And I click on end again. And then click on the check mark. So now I've created a little toolpath. Now the toolpath, the counter, a little menu is going to pop up with a lot of options. We're going to keep the counter selected and then go to tool now. And we're going to select our tool. So go over here to filter. And you want it to filter by flat uh, end mill flats. And make them equal to 0.75. So once you do this, go to the check mark. Click the check mark. And then click on select library tools and you're going to see only one tool. So it's got a three quarter inch flat and milk. Left click on it and then click on the check mark to load it. So now you have your tool here. Now we want to change that feed rate to 36. And then the spindle speed to 4500. And the reason we're doing this is because we're using aluminum as our stock. And that is the normal feed rate and the spindle speed you would use when you're machining aluminum. So we're going to keep that and then go to holder. You don't have to place a holder, but if you'd like to see a tool holder while it's machining, then you can go ahead and open it up. And I'm just going to click on any tool holder, click on the check mark to open it up, and then just click on any random tool holder. So I'm just going to click on B3C40020, and it tells you what that means, uh, the um, features for it and the length of it and everything on the right side. So uh, click on apply and then now go to cut parameters. Now cut parameters, we're going to keep it on the left. And this means it's going to be on the left side of the mach machining on the left side of the uh, line that we uh, placed earlier or that we chose earlier. We're going to come down here to lead in out. Now lead in out, we want to uncheck the entry and exit because this is an open counter that we're using. But we're going to come down here we're going to adjust the start contour to 100% and then click on extend. And now we want to copy this to the exit. So entering and exit it we want it 100% machining. So we're going to click on apply and then go over here to multi passes and click on multi passes. And we want to check multi passes and for the spacing we want it to be half an inch spacing. So change it to 0.5 and then for the finish we're going to actually rough the use number 2 for the finish and then use for, uh, for the roughness and then for the finish we're going to use number 1 and then keep that at 0 0.05. So we're going to keep the tool down. Now, if we don't keep the tool down that means the tool will machine once, go up and then come back down, machine again, go up and come back down. We want the tool to stay uh, down the whole time, so we'll go back and forth, so we can save a lot of time while machining. So I'll go and click on the apply button. Now go to the linking parameters, click on the linking parameters, and then this is where you set up how far down you want your tool to come while machining. So it tells you all the parameters over here. We're going to basically almost keep them all the same, but we're going to check the clearance to be 2 inches, so it clears 2 inches above the part. We're going to change the retract to maybe 0.5 inches so it gets up about a half an inch above the part. And then go back over here and for depth make it negative 0.5. Now remember you want, you're going under, in, into the part half an inch. So negative 0.5. Apply. And then now if you want to set up your coolant as well you can go ahead and click on coolant on the left side. And for flood just turn it on. Click on apply and then click on the check mark. Now we're going to see our toolpath. Now what you actually see is the toolpath being on the outside instead of the inside. Now remember we wanted to machine the inside flat and we're going to learn how to change that pretty soon. So now that we got our toolpath all set up, we're going to go to, uh, now we're going to learn some features over here. Some of the features are we generate all dirty operation. A dirty operation is for every time you change a parameter the dirty operation uh, you want to click on regenerate all dirty operations so you're regenerating your toolpath you don't want your toolpath to look the same or to be the same every time you change parameters but you want it to change as you do that to, to your view so you can see what is going on so to do that all you have to do is click on it 
Now, no operations were selected. That's because there's no dirty operations right now. So what I'm going to do right here is go to parameters, left click on it, and we're going to have our box pop up again. And this is where anything that we change from now on will lead to, uh, you know, so basically if I go over here, unclick and click, click apply, click on the check mark. Now actually I didn't really change anything, so it's not going to really tell me that I've changed anything. So now this is one thing I want you to notice. How do we change this toolpath to be from the outside to the inside? Now to do this, we want to go to parameter, and underneath cut parameter, we're going to change this to right, and this is going to change our tool to the other side of the um, toolpath. So we're going to click apply, click on the check mark, and now you're going to see an X under the toolpath, and that's because you need to regenerate it. So go ahead and regenerate it, and there you go. Now you see the toolpath on the inside instead of the outside. And that's because we changed where the tool is. Now it's machining on the inside. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and click on Backplot Selected Operation. So we're going to open up Backplot, and we want to make sure three features are enabled, and which are the Display Tool, Display Holder, and Display Rapid Moves. Now you don't need to display the tool or the holder to see it machine, but it's very nice. It shows you how the tool and how the machining is happening. So go ahead and click on the check mark, and then go ahead and click on right next to it on Verify Selected Operation, and this is where you see everything in 3D. So now that you have Verify Selected Operation, make sure you have the Select Tool and Holder, so you can see the tool and the holder machining the part, and go ahead and change your speed to about the middle. Now before you change that, go ahead and go over here to Options and click on Options, and you can see a little Options menu up here. Now you want to click on change tool and color. And what will that, that, that will do is change the color of the machining. So the machining doesn't all look the same. So you can kind of see what's being machined while it's being machined. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the check mark. Say OK. And then go over here and click on stop on collision. You want it to stop if there's any collision happening. So now you can go ahead and actually play it. And you can see the machining happening. So it's going to machine one side, it's going to come back and machine the other side. And that's it. And I'm going to, I can stop it, go back, repeat it if I'd like to. I can click on the check mark and go back to my toolpath. And there you go, you just learned how to do your first 2D toolpath counter.